In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us and strengthen us with your sacred body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us praise God as we pray. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You, son of man, I have appointed watchman for the house of Israel. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked, O oh, wicked, you shall surely die, and you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way, the wicked shall die for his guilt but I will hold you responsible for his death. But if you warn the wicked, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt, but you shall save yourself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor. Hence, love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. The last line of today's Gospel, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them, should be words of our Lord that we find reassuring and that give us hope and confidence and strength because they remind us that we are not alone, that the Lord is with us, that Jesus Christ, our risen Savior, is in our midst. And even though we can look around and say, well, it's sort of strange to attend Mass in this kind of situation and in this way, the fact that we have come together, two or three, we believe that the Lord is here with us, that the Lord is in our midst. I remember very clearly being in the seminary many years ago, and we read the original Greek, uh, biblical Greek text of the New Testament. And basically, according to the Gospel of John, it says that God pitched his tent in our midst. And what a wonderful image that is, because it tells us that God is not far away. God is not distant. God does not keep us at arm's length. Rather, he is close to us, and he wants us to be close to him. And he wants to have a personal relationship with each and every one of us. And no matter who we are, no matter where we're from, no matter what our position in life may be, each and every one of us is highly treasured and highly loved by Almighty God. So I think we need to be mindful of that reality. Does anyone here subscribe to the Magnificat? Anybody get that? Okay, a few people do. Does anybody have it with them? Okay, oh good. All right, well I'm gonna give you homework if you subscribe to the Magnificat. I want you, when you go home, to turn to page 78 and read that one brief little page. 
And I'm actually going to read some of it to you because earlier in the week, I read this and I, I just, there's one line that I just thought was absolutely magnificent. And it's written by Bishop Robert Barron. And the two lines I'm going to read to you are, it is a peculiarity of Christian prayer that it is not so much directed to God who stands outside of the one who prays, but rather that it takes place, if I can put it this way, within God. In baptism, a person is grafted onto Christ, indeed, so intimately that he commences to share in Christ's own relationship to his Father. In baptism, a person is grafted onto Christ. What an interesting image. And I think we could reflect upon that, meditate upon that, think about that, pray about that for the rest of the day. In baptism, a person is grafted onto Christ, which again reminds us how special and how important we are to Almighty God. Many years ago in another parish, I did a baptism. And the little girl who was going to be baptized, her aunt was my director of religious education, and her grandmother ran our Christmas bazaar. She ran our church store, the religious goods store. She trained the lectors for the parish. So both of them were involved, so I knew them very well. So afterwards, I went down to have lunch with the family. And we were sitting there, a large group of people, and I remember grandmom saying to me, I'm so happy. My granddaughter is a little Christian girl. Now that she's been baptized, she belongs to God. And I thought, I've been a priest for 25 years and nobody's ever said that. But I thought, what an interesting way to describe it. And as soon as I read this words by Bishop Barron, that we are grafted onto Christ, I immediately thought of Nancy saying, my daughter is a little Christian girl. And that says, again, as Bishop Barron says, that in the eyes of Almighty God, we are special. In the eyes of Almighty God, we are unique. And that God wants to be in our lives. He wants to have a relationship with us. And he reminds us, no matter what, we are never, ever alone. As we walk through our pilgrim journey here on earth, God walks with us. At times, it may not seem like that, and I think for all of us, these past six months have been trying and difficult. They've certainly turned our lives upside down. And I can't help but think if we have not been affected physically by the coronavirus, that all of us have been affected emotionally and spiritually and psychologically. Because all that was normal isn't normal anymore. The people who we used to rely on for support and strength and comfort many times are not there or cannot be there or we cannot be there with them because of things like quarantine and social distancing and all of those things. So it's a new and different world. But we remind ourselves that we are walking with one another in a new way. Certainly I hope that each and every one of us is praying for each other. That's one true and great gift that we can give to another person, is to pray for them. And even though we may not be able to get on a plane and go to Florida or California or Wisconsin where loved ones are, we certainly can keep them in our hearts in prayer to Almighty God. And that again reminds us that we're not walking alone during these difficult and strange days even though we may be doing it from a little more of a distance than we would like, we are still walking with one another. And the Lord is still walking with us. So we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be fearful. We don't have to be anxious. Because the Lord walks with us holding our hand. And in everything, the Lord has our back. I can't help but think of the Footprints poem, where the man at the end of his life is looking upon his life and he sees that most of the time there were two sets of footprints walking with him or that were walking through life. And he sees that at different times there was only one set of footprints and it was when he found things hard and rough and difficult and tough to get through. 
And he says to the Lord, why is it that you walked with me through most of my life, but when things were really hard, you weren't there with me? And Jesus said to him, my son, that's when I carried you. So we are a people of hope. We are a people of faith. We are a people of trust. And we can be that for one simple reason, because we know no matter what, the Lord walks with us. The Lord never leaves us alone. The Lord never deserts us or forgets us. In all things, Jesus Christ is with us. Let us stand and profess our faith in Christ and in his church. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us, men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And while the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man, for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence in God's love and mercy, let us present him our prayers and needs. For bishops, priests, and deacons, may they who labor to faithfully share the good news, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For civil servants who strive to end racial inequity and violence, may local leaders lead efforts toward reconciliation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the Diocese of Wilmington, to have an increase in priestly and religious vocations, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are ill, especially Jeannie Rogers and Grace Licata, to know God's love for them in the way we care for their needs, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, James Mooney, and especially Gaetano Renz, uh, in, that, that experience God's light and love forever in heaven, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, Father of us all, with confidence in your love and mercy, we turn to you in faith. We present to you our prayers, and we ask you to appear to answer them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth is given and human hands have made, and will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, we the divine and work of human hands will become for us our spiritual drink. Let us pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> o God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of this sacred mystery, 
we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is to the right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to have taught us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Francis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Anne, St. Juan Diego, St. John Vianney, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I give you peace, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God. Amen. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. 
sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word, and my soul shall be healed. Christ.
let us pray. Grant that you're faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with light through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go forth in peace.